Good morning to those of you who are here in church and to those of you watching online. Thank you for joining us at our celebration of the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. In our readings today, we hear two different reactions when people encountered God. Either they cower away in fear or they cling to what they see. These readings encourage and challenge us once more to embrace the Lord when He reaches out to us, and then to proclaim His goodness in our lives to everyone, including our family, friends, and neighbors. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Donald, and the preacher is Father Isaiah Mary. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of Christ our Lord be with you all. Let's call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his mercy, which he gladly gives us. Come, let us worship God our Father. Lord, have mercy. And bow low before the God who made us. Christ, have mercy. He indeed is the Lord our God, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, Lord God, Lord God, Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, mercy on me. the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you alone are mercy on You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen? Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, 
I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, with a train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. They cried out to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among the people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongues from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said. Send me. The word of the Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. Sing. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praise, Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praise, O Lord. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. Sire of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. I will sing your praises, Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preach to you, which you indeed received and in which you also stand. Through it, you are also being saved if you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, not feel to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the charge of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them. Not I, however, but the grace of God that is with me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. But at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made, had made seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, we have been reminded that we have been chosen. That we have been chosen. All three readings today remind us that we have been hand-selected by our God in order to offer the gift of Jesus to everyone we encounter. We have been chosen. Last week, we remember that Father Roberto reminded us that love is unstoppable, that the power of love can bring wondrous healing, strength, and life. And this unstoppable force chooses us, hand-selects us, to do great and wonderful things, to share this great unstoppable force of love, to share the sacrificial gift of love that Jesus has to everyone we encounter, and to offer that great gift to others. We have been chosen. In today's gospel, we meet Simon Peter for the first time in this today's gospel, and Peter is repulsed by the very thought of being chosen. Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Perhaps Simon Peter cannot fathom a time and a place where he, be, where he can be considered so special by God or by anyone. And perhaps some of us here, that's something that we can relate to. How can the immutable, all-powerful, majestic, magnanimous God consider and acknowledge little me? Compared to the creation of the mountains and the oceans and the Milky Way, what have I done to garner such a positive response from the creator of the universe? More than anyone else in that boat, Simon Peter recognizes the glory of God, and thus Simon Peter recognizes his own sinfulness, his own self-centeredness. Simon Peter, more than anyone in that boat, recognized that he was unworthy to be in the presence of greatness. Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Yet nonetheless, Simon has been chosen, and he has been chosen to do glorious and wonderful things in our world. And this is what it means to be chosen. Not only that we have been hand-selected by the majestic, magnanimous God, we are hand-selected for a particular mission. Because it, it, it is not enough to be chosen by God and, and to revel in our chosenness. That's not how God works. God doesn't treat us like a souvenir that sits on the bookcase. God chooses us in order to offer us a mission. 
And this is what it means to be chosen. That we have been chosen, handpicked by God for a mission. A mission that could bring healing, compassion, and love to all we encounter. We have been chosen for a mission. Yes, God always and everywhere is reaching out to us, offering us his love, his friendship, his compassion to us. God has hand-selected us to be in the count, to be this encounter when it comes, and it comes with a mission. Our second reading today reminds us what that mission is. St. Paul gives us our marching orders, and this is the mission. To tell others that Jesus came down from heaven in order to give us a blueprint of how to live and how to die. Paul spent his entire life telling anyone and everyone of the greatest story ever told. The story that we share every time that we Christians gather in Jesus' name. That God became man so that man may become God. And if Jesus can have compassion and mercy to choose and offer a mission to someone like Paul, Jesus will choose and offer a mission to each and every single one of us. Most of us will remember Paul's story, this murderer turned missionary. And on the road to Damascus that fateful day, Jesus gave Paul a second chance and he gave him a choice. Jesus gave Paul a second chance, not to kill Christians, but rather to be a Christian. Not to persecute the church, but rather to lead the church. Not to destroy the church, but through his words and actions to rather expand the church by being one of the church's greatest missionaries. Paul reminds us that despite our flaws, despite our limitations, despite our past, every single time we encounter God, God is giving us yet another chance, another opportunity, another grand adventure to be the light of Christ to the next person we encounter. We have been chosen for the mission, and the mission is this, to tell others that Jesus came down from heaven in order to give us the blueprint of how to live and how to die. So when we are getting out into the parking lot this morning, how can we be Christ to our fellow prisoners in those cars? When someone is refusing to let us into the lane, how can this be a moment to encounter our friendship with Christ? When we find ourselves listening too attentively to the news or too attentively to our social media, how can we be Christ-like to those who oppose our point of view, especially to those whom we love? Today, dear friends, we have been chosen by God to share God's joy and compassion to everyone we encounter. As we take the Lord into our heart of hearts this day, may our hearts and minds and ears be open to encounter the God who loves us, chosen as we are, to be God's compassion to our broken world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Spirit, 
Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. <clears throat> Let us pray to the Father <coughs> through Jesus Christ who calls us to preach the resurrection of the Son of God. For God's holy people, that we may recognize the Lord in all we do and be zealous in proclaiming his resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who govern the nations give to all people the necessities of a dignified life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to racism and intolerance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the work of all missionaries, that they may always and everywhere proclaim the resurrection of Christ in their lives, we pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of the Dominican priest of Vietnam, Father Joseph Tran Nhoc, and for all who have recently died for the faith, we pray to the Lord. For the parishioners of St. Dominic Parish, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our Book of Intentions, and those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving Father, hear the prayers of your people this day. May we be confident in your providence and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our family and our frailty, grant, we pray, that we may become for us, they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, our Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration so that they may become for you, for us, the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these Eucharist, this, these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks and praise, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles, our glorious martyrs, St. Joseph, our Holy Father Dominic, our Sister Catherine of Siena, and all the saints, Lorenzo Ruiz, and all the martyrs, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at the, their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from all of our fears and our anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay. We told his peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Let's pray together our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, <clears throat> so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. St. Dominic's Men's Retreat is scheduled for the weekend of March 11th to 13th at Mater Dolorosa Retreat Center. Information can be found in the bulletin. There's also a pamphlet inserted in today's bulletin. <clears throat> One in every five parishes in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles needs financial assistance, and one in every four Catholic schools needs critical funds to help keep their doors open. Every year, Archbishop Gomez call, asks all Catholics in Los Angeles to participate in Together in Mission annual appeal, and it is precisely to help those parishes and schools that are struggling. Commitment Sunday will be on February 27th, so we ask you to come prepared that day to give generously and making a pledge to help our poor Catholics in Los Angeles. Thank you very much. St. Dominic's will be sponsoring a special one-day retreat entitled Healing Your Family Tree, <clears throat> sponsored by the Southern California Renewal Communities, will take place on Saturday, February 26th. More information will be available in the coming weeks. Archbishop Gomez will be here at St. Dominic's <clears throat> to celebrate our 100th anniversary Mass on Sunday, February 20th at 10 a.m. There will be a Saturday Vigil Mass at 5 p.m. as usual, but the Centennial Mass on Sunday will be the only Mass celebrated at St. Dominic's that day. So you come to the 10 a.m. Mass or you don't come. Right? Right? You got it. Okay, good. So what time is the Mass on Sunday? Brilliant answer. You're brilliant. I, I have handsome, brilliant people all around me. Tickets for the luncheon following the Centennial Mass are available for purchase in the parish office. The only seats available at this time are in the outdoor tents, which will be um, located in the lower parking lot. Tickets are $15 per person. The bulletin has more details. Brother Thaddeus will continue his teaching series on exploring the Eucharist for young adults, <coughs> ages 18 to 39. It is every Thursday evening for the next few weeks. See more information in the bulletin. The Blessed Sacrament Confraternity will have a Mass on Tuesday, February 8th at 11 a.m., followed by lunch in the community center. Bring a sack lunch. Let's stand. The Lord be with you. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you all and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.